tell you my two favorite cases when it comes to the First Amendment law. One is this case called Claiborne versus the NAACP. In the 1960s and 1970s, the NAACP in like Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, were advocating boycotts against white-owned stores, against stores that they believe were engaging in injustice. And they would have their leaders, these affiliate and NAACP organizations, give these really fiery speeches about the need to enforce the boycott. And members of the NAACP would hear these speeches, young you know, members who had just joined a couple of years ago were super passionate, and they would go out and they would like burn stores down, or they would like mm -hmm. physically attack patrons who were um, violating the boycott. And the state of Mississippi sued the NAACP leaders saying, you're responsible for having riled these people up and incited this violence. Mm -hmm. And the state court of Mississippi ruled in favor of the state and imposed a bunch of liability on the NAACP and it got to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said unanimously that if you're engaged in protected political speech, saying that you think an election is fraudulent, saying that you think the boycott is justifiable, you cannot be held responsible for violent acts, even if your protected speech inspires those acts, if you're not intending to incite imminent violence. And then the other case is Brandenburg, which a lot of people know, where the state of Ohio had a, an anti-terrorism law that said you're guilty of a felony if you advocate violence against political officials. And the KKK leader gave a speech where he said, I think it's finally time to start taking vengeance against white leaders who have betrayed the white race. Um, and we ought to start killing them. Um, the state of Ohio arrested and prosecuted him under that statute and convicted him. It got to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, you're even allowed to advocate the justifiability of violence in the abstract. The one thing you're not allowed to do, said both cases, is incitement. And it was very narrowly defined, meaning like essentially you're outside somebody's house with a mob assembled and you say to them, it's time to go burn down that person's house where you're literally inciting imminent violence, like essentially right. immediately. So you would have to have Trump speaking to a crowd or going on Twitter and saying not just this election is fraudulent and not just saying it's time to go protest at the Capitol because lots of Democrats say that about the 2016 election, the 2004 election, the 2000 election, those were stolen, they're fraudulent, it's time to protest. You need Trump to say, Go attack the people yeah, in the Capitol. It's time kidnap to storm them. the Capitol. Yeah. 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 And he didn't do that either on not at that rally nor on Twitter. Yes, yeah, so is that where I want to get you in here? When you're talking